The power of spray foam insulation, new construction builds, and your HVAC. Today, I'm gonna to talk to you about why I think you should spray foam insulate your home or your new construction build. We're in a 4,000 square foot garage, and this is one single mini split that is going to heat and cool this whole entire building. Today, you're watching HVAC Tips for Technicians slash Homeowners. This is Taddy Digest. I'm Tad, let's get started. This whole building was spray foamed. So the walls were spray foamed and the ceiling area was spray foamed and it's on a slab. So we're on a concrete slab. We've got a section of ceiling that has not been installed. So I'll get to show you some of that spray foam. As you can see above me, that is all spray foam. So when you spray foam, you don't have any insulation above your ceiling. You have your spray foam against your roof. So you can see that's all spray foam. The walls have been covered up so you can no longer see it, but there's spray foam in the walls as well. Now let's take a look at the outdoor unit and then I'm gonna show you the load calculation for this building. This is the outdoor unit. This is a three ton unit. So it's got a cooling capacity of 36,000 BTUs. That's the nominal capacity. Now let's take a look at this load calculation and see what the cooling and heating capacity required to heat and cool the structure is. So cooling capacity required is 14,000 BTUs. Heating capacity is 45,000. So if we look at our tag here, says 36. Capacity to cool, 36,000. Heat, 40,000. So after seeing that and then seeing this, you would think, well, Tad, you undersize the equipment. It's not gonna heat and cool the structure. You have to look at the submittals. Let's take a look at the submittal. Here's the equipment we're using for this project. Let's zoom in where it says performance, capacity range, cooling, heating. So our cooling capacity range is up to 39,000 BTUs. Our heating capacity range is up to 47,000 BTUs. The load of the structure for heating was 45,000, so we're able to heat with this equipment. And then the cooling load was, I think, 14,000. So we're gonna have enough capacity provided by this equipment to heat and cool the load of the structure. Now, if we scroll down, we can see our line set sizes three-eighths and five-eighths, that's nice. We can see what our breaker size is. 35 amp double pole breaker, that's our max breaker size. And then we have other information like charged for, how many feet of line set? 24.6 feet. And then additional refrigerant per foot over 24.6 would be 0.11 ounce per foot. I love submittals. I got this from samsunghvac.com slash downloads under technical documents. If you want to learn more about Manual J and how to perform a heat load calculation, I'm going to put a video right here and then put that video down in the description. There will be a link. Click the link, watch the video, and you can learn more about how to do your own load calculation using a mobile app. The customer wanted a nice line set cover that would match the exterior, this wood. So we purchased this country pine color line set cover from permacover.com. You can get custom built metal durable line set covers from permacover.com. You can actually use discount code TADDY5. You can get 5% off. But this thing is sweet. I love their line set covers. You wanna learn more? Click the link, go down in the description, click the link, go visit their website. This building has three garage doors and it's got a shingle roof. Super nice stone on the bottom and then wood siding. Advantages of spray foam insulating your new construction house or your garage is you have less of a load for that heating and cooling. So that means you don't need as big of a HVAC system. So for instance, 4,000 square foot, if they just standard insulated this structure, we would probably have to have more than a five ton unit. We would probably have to have two units. We'd probably have to have a five ton unit and a two or a three ton unit. And that would put the cost of this project for the HVAC contractor, the budget would probably be 
uh, 20, 30 grand, somewhere in between. Right now, it's less than 10 grand because we have one three ton mini split. And because we can actually go above our capacity by about 30%, we're able to meet the demand. So instead of standard insulate, you spend a little bit more money, you foam insulate, and then you spend a lot less money with your HVAC. You wanna make sure that it makes sense though. You wanna pick the right contractor because prices can be all over the place sometimes, especially when you have different contractors with different types of businesses. As far as the layout, we've got our bathroom over here with a bath fan, and then we've got our office area over here. You wanna make sure that you have a way to get air into those areas because if you don't, you may have an issue with mold or mildew. You don't want that. This system right here will blow the air about 40 feet, almost 50 feet, in between 40 and 50. And if we advise the contractor who's building the home to either undercut the doors or add some type of hole with maybe a fan or some grills, then we can have that air pass through into that room even when the doors are closed. This will add to the comfort and this will help to mitigate some of those mold growth issues. Since this is a bathroom, we know there's gonna be a bath fan. So every time we come into the bathroom, we turn on that switch for the bath fan and it pulls air underneath the door and that air from in this large area is gonna be sucked in. So that's gonna to help to get that bathroom cooled and heated. Mechanical space. It's important to save as much space as possible. And when you have a mini split, versus a ducted system, you don't have all that duct work. So we saved a lot of space. We don't have a bunch of duct work above us. We don't have a unit above us because if it was a split, we'd have an outdoor unit and an indoor unit. And we wouldn't want to place the indoor unit inside the garage area because it really would be an eyesore, especially if this is going to be a car garage. You want to see cars, not your air handler or your gas furnace and coil and duct work. Then we didn't have to cut holes in the ceiling to put vents in. So all those holes, no, we're not gonna do any of that. So saving mechanical space is a great thing too. So when you spray foam, if you can do mini splits, then you can save that space. Let's say that the doors are gonna stay closed all the time and we're not gonna be able to cut a hole somewhere to add grills or add a fan. We're not gonna be able to undercut the doors. So this room's gonna be sealed up tight. We can always add a smaller mini split in here later on. What's the cost of that? Less than $5,000. So our total investment is still less than what it would be if we had two units. Plus these are mini splits, they're super efficient, and our electric bill every month is going to be very affordable. Instead of having two larger units, conventional, and all that space taken up, mechanical space, and then our electric bill's higher. Here's the breaker that powers that heating and cooling system. 35 amp breaker, that's it. Minimum circuit ampicity for this unit is around 20 amps. So we could expect our electric bill to be right around $100 or less every single month. That's amazing. We were looking at doing a gas unit before. So we would have had to have gas lines and then we would have had a gas bill. And it just, it works out so much better when you just do a commercial type mini split system and you have one unit, that's it. Hope you enjoyed today's video. Hope you learned something. If you did learn something, let me know what it was down in the comments. If you've got a question, remember questions can lead to new content. So put your questions down below. If you don't have a question, that's okay. Let me know who you are and let me know where you're from. You've been watching HVAC Tips for Technicians slash Homeowners. I'm Tad and I'll keep you cool if you let me.